Getting a new puppy can be one of the most exciting and rewarding things you'll ever do, but it's so important that you've done your research and know exactly what to expect. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the costs involved in owning a bloodhound to give you a more clear idea and to make sure you're not left counting the pennies. Welcome back to the Fenrir Bloodhound Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Charlie and I'm a certified canine leader here at Fenrir, canineleaders.com. Everything we do here is dedicated to helping you find the perfect breed for you and then helping you become a high level canine leader who can raise the perfect canine companion. If that sounds like you, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell to make sure you never miss another upload. From the start of 2020 through to 2021, the world's been hit with the coronavirus. This virus has had big impacts globally. It's seen countries put into lockdown and people staying in their homes to keep each other safe. The coronavirus has even affected the canine world. The prices of puppies have become extortionate and almost tripled during this time. This is because of the demand for new puppies have grown due to people being at home during lockdown. People have had more free time to devote to training and socialisation. The demand for dogs has significantly increased, therefore the cost of puppies has sadly increased too. It's important that when you're looking to buy a bloodhound puppy, you know how much money you should be spending. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the price range you should anticipate when getting a new puppy. It's always important that before buying any puppy you check that they've come from a proper background of healthy dogs, that the parents are healthy and that you're not buying from a puppy mill. A reputable breeder will charge you a fair price and won't look to rip you off. You should look at spending around £1,000 to £1,500 or $700 to $1,200 in the US to ensure that you get a healthy, well-bred bloodhound puppy. Currently, the UK's top breeders for bloodhounds are charging £2,000 for a high-end show and working line, so any breeders charging more than this, in my opinion, are charging more than they should. Unfortunately, due to COVID-19, some breeders have been charging up to uh, 2500 to £3,000 or 2000 to $3,000. It's important that you pay the right price for your puppy, so wait until you find one that's in the correct price range and has been bred from healthy parents. Ensure the puppy comes microchipped with its first vaccinations completed and any paperwork if they've been registered by the Kennel Club. Good breeders will also usually gift you a bag of food that the puppy's been eating and a blanket that has them with a smell on to help settle the puppy in quicker into its new forever home. It's also worth considering the option of rehoming. Unfortunately, each year, thousands of dogs are placed into rescue shelters because their previous owners have not fully considered the implications of what owning a dog requires. They soon find they can't cope with the breed they've chosen for multiple reasons, be that the cost of looking after one, the temperament training requirements, or they just don't have the time to dedicate to them. It certainly is worth considering looking at dogs and rescue shelters as this will save you money on the cost of a new puppy, but more importantly give one of these beautiful puppies a second chance at a forever home. Now let's look into the cost of feeding your new bloodhound puppy. It's completely your decision on what you want to feed your new puppy. It's generally a good idea to keep them on the same food that your breeder's been feeding the litter for the first month or so. If you do want to change the food to a different type of food or different brand after your first month, you should do this slowly. If you're feeding a dry food, mix a small amount to their usual food. Over the next couple of weeks, you can slowly increase the amount of the new food until you've eventually phased out the old food. The price of dry food depends on what type of kibble you feed your puppy. Cheaper dry kibble tends to be full of cereals and grains that don't actually have much meat in the meat that has been added will be a poorer quality. These cheaper brands of dog food offer less nutritional value. When looking for a good quality dog kibble, you should start by looking at the first few ingredients in the ingredient list. The first ingredients listed should always be a meat or fish product and be a high percentage of the overall ingredients. If the first few ingredients listed on the dog food is a cereal or grain, then the dog food will probably not be a high quality one. Dogs only need around 5% of fibre or, or fat in their daily meal. Most of a canine's nutrition comes from animal-based products plant proteins are not complete and can be harder for your dog to digest. The average cost of a bag of high quality dog food costs around 12 to 15 pounds for a two kilogram bag or 18 to 20 dollars for a four and a half pound bag. However, it does work out cheaper to buy larger bags. Another food alternative and one of the best ways to feed your puppy is by choosing a raw diet. You can buy ready-made options from most pet stores or you can choose to do a DIY raw diet. Feeding a raw diet will be more expensive. However, when you feed a raw diet, you'll know exactly what your puppy's eating. The cost of feeding your bloodhound a raw diet will depend on the brand you choose to use. If you choose to feed a raw, ready-made raw diet or DIY raw diet, the meat your puppy likes and how much your bloodhound actually eats will depend on it. Some dogs may not like certain meats and many dogs are actually allergic to chicken, so this may lead you to feeding a different meat, which could cost more or less. There are plenty of other costs when you're getting a new bloodhound. You'll need to buy 
things like crates, beds, toys and treats ready for your new bloodhound puppy. So let's look at the approximate cost breakdown for the items you'll need. Vaccinations. Your bloodhound puppy should have had their first vaccinations at around six to eight weeks before you pick them up. They should have had their second set of vaccinations two weeks after. The cost of these vaccinations will differ where you live and the cost between 30 to 60 pounds or 75 to 100 dollars. Yearly vaccination boosters. This will be required yearly to keep your dog up to date with their vaccinations. If you've chosen to insure your dog, your insurance could become invalid if you've not kept up to date with your canine's yearly boosters. You can find out the cost of the yearly boosters by consulting your veterinary practice as the cost varies between practices and different areas. Food and water bowls. You will need both a food and water bowl for your puppy that will be easy to clean. You can get stainless steel sets that will come with both a food and water bowl for around £10 or $15. Dog beds. It's a good idea to invest in a good quality dog bed that can't be ripped apart. Depending on the type and quality of dog bed you choose, they can cost anywhere between 80 to 150 pounds or 110 to 200 dollars. Crates. It's important that you select the right size crate for your bloodhound. They should have enough room to be able to go in and turn around in their crate comfortably and lie down in it. Make sure your crate's not too big or small. For a good quality crate, it'll cost around 80 to 200 pounds or 100 to 200 dollars. It's also a good idea to invest in a crate cover to make your bloodhound space private. Collars and leads. It's important that you invest in a good quality strong collar and lead that your puppy won't slip out of. You should spend around 25 pounds or 35 dollars for a collar and lead that will grow in size with your puppy. Worming and fleeing. You should look at deworming your bloodhound every three months or every month if they tend to eat things off the floor during walks. Worming tablets will cost around £5 or $12 and fleeing should be done monthly and this will cost around £8 or $30. You should also buy your bloodhound treats and toys too. The cost of treats and toys completely depend on the brands you buy, how much you buy and how quickly your bloodhound gets through both of them treats and toys. I personally feed my dog natural treats like furry rabbit ears as these are natural dewormers and long lasting things like trachea's, yakas and antlers. However, it is a personal preference. Some people may not want to feed natural treats and other treats are still fine to feed. I also choose long lasting toys that won't be destroyed instantly and puzzle toys that will mentally stimulate and entertain them. Other costs to be aware of include if you choose to have a dog walker using a boarding kennel when you go on holiday or if you choose to send your bloodhound to puppy training classes. Also the cost of neutering if you choose to neuter your bloodhound. It's also strongly advised that you should get your bloodhound insured to cover health issues like hip and elbow dysplasia, patella luxation and heart problems. You can choose the level of cover and protection you require. Personally, I'd recommend getting your dog insured as the cost of it will give you peace of mind against the rising vet costs if your canine ever needed life-saving treatment. Any dog that you choose will always cost you money. It's completely up to you how much you choose to spend. There are a good range of products that suit most budgets, but like everything, you'll usually pay more for a better quality. It's extremely important that you do your research before getting any puppy and having a realistic idea of cost is essential. Too many dogs are abandoned or put in shelters through no fault of their own because their owners have not thoroughly researched the costs involved and find they can't afford to look after them properly. Overall, your bloodhound will certainly be a worthwhile investment. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video if so make sure you hit that like button and get involved down in the comment section below and don't forget if you are new here to make sure you subscribe we have three dedicated bloodhound videos coming here every single week so i can't wait to touch you again on the next episode of the fenrir bloodhound show